By providing space for constant evolution, we can all transform how we view ourselves and the world around us. I'm up on this stage today to talk about something that is very near and dear to my heart, uh, but can be a bit touchy, especially in this day and age, uh, and that is my faith. Um, I am a Catholic. I practice at Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church over in Montecito, and it's something that I'm proud of, as I'm sure my friends at this point can attest. Um, now, before I continue, I do want to take a quick poll just to be a show of hands. So please raise your hands if you have been to church or temple or any other religious or spiritual service in the past month. All right. All right, all right. Now, I'm going to ask the same question, but if you've attended one of those services in the past week or you usually go once a week. Okay, thinning the herd, as expected, as expected. Now, I have one last question for you all uh, that may seem a bit unrelated, but I, bear with me, I promise I'll make it make sense. Please raise your hand if you have set aside, you, you're, you do set aside a block of time every week or you've done it in this past week to just meditate or think or reflect. Okay, okay, that's a lot of hands. That's a lot of hands, that's better than I was expecting. I'm gonna assume that everyone who raised their hand don't need me to continue. But I do have a whole speech memorized, and I think the TEDx team will be very sad if I just leave right now. So here goes nothing. Um, the point I want to make with that last question is, for me, my faith is a way to meditate. It is a way to reflect. It's also a way for me to get more comfortable in my own skin. Something I will share with you all, though, is I used to hate going to church, as my mother very well knows. For a bit of background, it was my mother who was the driving force behind my church attendance for many years. Uh, she was born into a traditional Catholic Irish family in Boston, Massachusetts, and when she had children, she brought them all to church. Uh, she's a very impressive woman, by the way. But I do have a picture here of my baptism. Uh, for those of you who don't know, baptism is the first sacrament a member of the Catholic Church accepts. It's not exactly one that you go through by choice, but it still was my first step, figuratively speaking. Uh, so now I'm going to skip ahead a few years, and at this point, I'm going to church weekly, I'm going to Sunday school afterward, and I am not happy about that arrangement. I got two weeks off, two days off, sorry, two days off of school every week. I still only get two days off of school every week, that's a whole other point, and I was spending two hours on Sunday at church, bored out of my mind, and then at more school. No thank you. But I kept going to church, and I went through First Communion, my First Communion picture with my little Bible, uh, mainly because my mother made me. But she made me under the promise that when I turned 16, I could make my own decision. I could decide to get confirmed and become a full adult member of the Catholic Church or not. And I could not wait to opt out. Uh, but I am waiting, because I had to, and I'm getting older, think, think 14, 15, and I'm starting to endure the weekly masses a bit better. I am more patient with the homilies, etc., but believe you me, believe you me, I could not wait to be like, you don't have to wake me up this Sunday. I'm not going to church at 10 a.m., let me sleep. But when the question was finally posed to me when I was 16, the question I've been waiting literally years to say no to, I found myself saying yes. Yes, I do want to start the confirmation process. I know, it's a huge plot twist. I can see you're all at the edge of your seat. Um, but I was heading to church more eagerly on Sundays. After that moment, I started attending, conf attending confirmation class afterward, and I was really understanding so much more than I did when I was younger about the faith, but also about myself. So in May of 2022, less than a year ago, I was confirmed and became a full member of the Catholic Church. Now, this is a fun story and all. I know you all saw the plot just coming from a mile away, but when I was 15, I really didn't. And the question was why. That's the question I actually had to go find an answer to when I realized I was giving this talk. And there are multiple answers to this question. First one is you get to pick a patron saint. You literally get to look at a big database and be like, oh, that guy's kind of cool, and I kind of like his name. I'm just going to take his name and put it in mine. And... I don't know, maybe that's just a me thing. I thought that was kind of cool. I don't know. Um, the second aspect was the th aspect. 
And I like to think it was this that was the most impactful for me to immediately and led me to make my decision. Uh, so it was my mother who introduced me to the faith. She brought me to church every weekend. But it was my brother and one of my confirmation teachers, Justin Mack, who really helped me understand the faith better. So Kevin, pictured here, my brother, enjoying his life, and Justin are both very strong believers in God. Yet they still take advantage of every opportunity to learn more about God, yes, but also about the nature of religion, about science, about history, about philosophy, etc. And to me, they really emphasize the power of faith. Not as a way to just explain everything like people over a thousand years ago did, but as a way to just look at the world through a slightly different lens and to combine different aspects of the physical and the spiritual world. Now, there's a third aspect to part three, if I may, and that is the part that I'm still living in the moment. I, like I said at the beginning of this talk, am a junior. For anyone who has gone through junior year or is experiencing it right along with me, I think we can all agree it is really hard. But for an hour a week, I get a moment of serenity. Now, I do want to be painfully clear. Here's my little disclosure. This is not an attempt to convert anyone. I do not intend to convert anyone, nor, does it, nor is it necessarily my desire to convert anyone or promote the Catholic Church as an institution. That's not why I'm up here talking to you all today. I'm up here talking to you all, I'm quite frankly boring you all, because of a change that I experienced in myself and what I learned from it. So, meditation, music, art, visual and performing, these are all other examples of where you can kind of tap in and maybe learn something about yourself that you didn't before. Good friend of mine here at school, Lucy, she delved deep into the world of all things soccer, so if anyone has any questions about the current Premier League standings, I'm sure she knows the answer. But for me, I found a part of myself in a very unexpected place, and that was my faith. So, for an hour a week, I go and I sit in one of the pews. I start by just staring. I just stare. That's all I do. I admire the art. Our Lady of Mount Carmel is a beautiful church. The picture here doesn't quite do it justice, but it's got beautiful old Spanish architecture, painted altar, massive mural, which is covered up by a chandelier in this picture, sadly, but a massive, gorgeous mural. And I sit and I think and I reflect and I do the things that I usually really don't take the time to do throughout the rest of the week. Then, as the opening hymn begins, I stand up with everyone else, and I sing along to the piano and the vocalist who has a gorgeous voice, and I really just enjoy the music. As Mass continues, I listen to the readings. I appreciate the history within them, how they talk about God and the Bible, yes, but also just culture and life in the Middle East in Rome in 50 CE. I listen to the gospel, and I appreciate the wisdom that it really does try to impart, if not always successfully or a little conservatively. But this is my experience with faith. So I promise I'm wrapping it up here. Uh, the mess there is a message I want to leave you all with, and that is to just keep an open mind. That is what my experience with faith has taught me. Uh, it's also taught me that you may find peace in really unexpected places. You might find a part of yourself that you really didn't expect to find. Now, I'm very aware that faith will not work for everyone. It really won't. It really won't. But I can still share what lessons I learned in my experience with it. And so I leave you all with the very, very, very cliche saying of try new things, <laughs> but also try old things. I mean it. Try things that you stopped doing for reasons known or reasons unknown. Explore. Explore things you're curious about, yes. But also, explore things that you hated two or three years ago. Because who knows? You really, you really don't know what part of yourself you might find. Thank you.